A few months ago, I made a custom car PC based on a Raspberry Pi. One of the features that attracted a lot of attention was the possibility to stream live audio to the Raspberry Pi via Bluetooth. Many viewers asked for more details, so I've decided to revisit the project and show you how I've done it. For this project, we will need a Raspberry Pi 2, a USB Bluetooth dongle and a speaker. And if you are interested in the code, I have uploaded all the configuration and commands in my blog, link in the description. So, without any further delay, let me show you how I've turned a Raspberry Pi into a custom Bluetooth speaker. My name is Gradion, and this is Maker's Report. First of all, we need to prepare a fresh microSD card with a recent installation of Raspbian. Let's head over to this website, where we can download the Raspbian image and follow the link to the very clear installation guide. For this project, I've been using Raspbian version Stretch, released on June 2018. However, any recent version of Raspbian should do. Now that our Raspberry Pi is up and running, we need to make sure that our system is up to date. Open a terminal window and launch the usual update commands, apt-get update and apt-get dist upgrade. Your Pi will update itself. If you intend to deploy a system like this one, you may want to remove some of the bigger packages you're not going to use, such as the Wolfram Engine and LibreOffice. My vanilla fresh installation of Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B took around 15 minutes to update itself. It's up to you. I also like to update the firmware of the device, although it should not be strictly necessary for this project. In any case, we now need to shut down, as we are ready to start configuring the Pi as a Bluetooth speaker. Insert the Bluetooth dongle in a free USB port and reboot your Pi. Once the Pi has restarted, open a terminal and install the required packages for Blues and Pulse Audio. In case you're wondering, Blues is a Linux library that provides support for core Bluetooth functions. In this video, we will be using it to redirect uh, the audio information from the Bluetooth adapter to the speakers via the Pulse Audio service. The user account running the service must be added to the LP group to be able to access and configure Bluetooth devices. Then, we need to set up the resampling algorithm in the Pulse Audio configuration file to make sure it works with Bluetooth. The trivial method will do. Some tutorials online recommend using different configurations, but in my case only the trivial method has worked. Open the daemon.conf file and edit the resample method line. Also, we need to enable some required functionality by editing the Bluetooth main configuration file. This file contains a lot of settings that you may want to customize if you know what you're doing. For our purpose, we need to enable functions source, sync, media, and socket. And now, it is time to reboot the system. Ok, back on the command line, we should now be able to see our Bluetooth device being identified as HCI0 by hci-config. Let's activate the Bluetooth service and run hci-config. Nice! If you can see your Bluetooth dongle being identified, you should be able to scan for Bluetooth devices. Activate your smartphone's Bluetooth and run a device scan on the Raspberry Pi. Your smartphone's Bluetooth address should eventually appear on the screen. Note the smartphone address down, for we will need it later. If you wish, you can try sending a ping to your phone as well, using L2 ping and passing the Bluetooth address of your phone. Not really useful to our purpose, but I thought it would be cool to see my smartphone responding to pings coming from my Raspberry Pi. Ok, now we need to pair the Raspberry Pi to our phone. To do so, we need first to run hci-config and pass the PI scan option. Now, the output of hci-config-a should contain a line saying up, running, pscan, iscan, in all caps. If it does, you can launch the Blues agent with a Bluetooth CTL command. Then, you can refresh the list of devices on your phone. Your Raspberry Pi should now be visible. On my phone, I tap the Raspberry Pi and enter a random pin of my choice. Mm -hmm. 
Bluetooth CTL on the Pi will ask for the same pin. Then it will ask to authorize two services, respectively audio calls and multimedia. Just say yes and we are finally paired. Now we need to check if the smartphone is identified as a data source. Run PACTL list sources short and check that a blues entry containing your underscore separated smartphone address is present. In the same way, check for available data syncs. Only one platform SOC audio analog stereo should be present. Now, logically enough, we need to connect the data source to the sync to make sure that audio data entering the Pi via Bluetooth is redirected to the standard audio device. The last step is to redirect the HDMI audio to the jack output and turn up the volume. We can use a mixer and PACMD for these tasks. Now, we can hook a regular speaker to the audio jack of our Pi and start a YouTube video on the smartphone. All sound produced by the phone, including ringtones and voice calls, is now redirected to the Raspberry Pi and played on the speaker. The quality is really good, at least to my untrained ear, but a noticeable lag of 100 to 300 milliseconds is present. This is not really a big deal for music playback, but it can get frustrating when watching a video or making a phone call. Unfortunately, I believe this lag cannot be reduced much. The sound information hops through several layers of software, a wireless link, and I would not be shocked if the signal gets re-encoded here or there. But considering the ridiculous cost and simplicity of this solution, I cannot really complain, can I? The system as it is configured starts up automatically when I boot the Raspberry Pi. This means that any time I want to stream to my car PC, I just need to activate the Bluetooth on my smartphone, pair it, and all audio is automatically redirected to my Raspberry Pi. This, of course, only if the Bluetooth device is in range. And so that's it! That's why I turned a Raspberry Pi into a custom Bluetooth speaker for my car PC project. Once again, if you are interested in the code, please head to my blog, you will find all information and all the code there, link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and if you like this type of content, feel free to stick around for more. My name is Gradian, and this was Maker's Report.